Hello, uh, I decided to try recording this lecture a little bit different. So we are doing your organic lab. So if you don't have it, uh, I would recommend printing it. So it would be lab two organic. And if you're not able to print, I would have it up on a screen. So if you at least have a computer, you can pull one up on your phone screen and one up on your computer. If you only have one, you'll just have to go back and forth because you can pause me at any time. And I also thought today, before we begin, that we should always take a moment uh, and send love and gratitude out to all the people um, who need our love and gratitude. Gratitude because we're in Oregon, and so we're in um, we're in a very luxurious place right now. My mom's in New Jersey, as I've said, and she's in a very safe part of New Jersey. But um, yeah, so we'll just take a moment. You can even just take a moment, put your hand on your heart, and just say thank you. All right. So we're going to share. And so I have a document camera. And we are doing the organics lab. I apologize. Uh, which is organics to organics. And you can read the intro. Uh, but the key is what's highlighted here is carbons. Organic chemistry is about carbons. And carbons make four covalent bonds. Uh, and so I have little molecules so you can see the tetrahedral uh, no matter how you turn it and so that's our simplest organic molecule but organic compounds historically were uh, they classified things as either belonging from came from a living thing it was an organic molecule uh, and if it came from inorganic from uh, the earth it was not organic and then as we started so they believed something that was organic uh, had a vital essence in it, which was attainable only from God. And then in 17, or sorry, 1828, Frederick Wooler took two salts, two inorganic compounds, and made urea, which is human urine. And so he said, urea. Uh, I know we all think it was the other guy who said eureka, but who knew? Uh, and so they say it destroyed the theory, but there is a belief still by many people, including your teacher, that um, organic things that do come from nature do have an essence. And that would be what the difference is between high fructose corn syrup, which is a man-made synthesized, highly refined, uh, and regular fructose, which comes from um, honey and fruit. So when you have it as a whole food, your body knows what to do with it. So when you eat fruit or honey, your body actually uses the fructose as energy. And when you take it in as high fructose corn syrup, so I'll be making those healthy changes. Um, your body stores it as fat, even if you needed energy, it just stores it. And doesn't matter if it got it from Coca-Cola or those energy drinks or all that stuff that comes from the coffee places. All right, let's start with organic chemistry. So the key with organic chemistry is counting to 10. Uh, and the first four are the only ones that are not instinctual that you haven't learned in geometry. So one carbon is called meth. Uh, two carbons we see F, so ethanol is probably the most famous one there. A two carbon alcohol is ethanol. Three carbons is prop, so propane, which a lot of people use for heating, um, especially gas stoves or when you go camping. Propane has three carbons. But came from butter, is part of the derivative there, uh, is four carbons, and then penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, and deca. So octane, eight carbons, would be um, what we put in our car, has eight carbons. So we're going to go through drawing, and so you can just work along with me. You can pause and rewind whenever you want, which is harder to do when we're live. Uh, so the molecular formula just means how many carbons and hydrogens there are. So alkanes, the key with alkanes is they're said to be saturated. So saturated just means uh, it's all single bonds. So we have only single bonds in our compound. And so there's different ways of showing this. Uh, we're going to draw molecular formulas and zigzag formulas. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So one carbon is going to have four hydrogens. So that is CH4, which is methane. So meth means one carbon and ane. 
And our zigzag, we can't really do for this. Another way of showing it, I want to show you for this one, is you just draw a carbon and you put the lines around. So hydrogens, when they're attached to carbons, it's a shorthand. They actually will just show it as a line. And there's going to be an easier shorthand in a moment. So when we go to two carbons, we'll keep drawing it like this. If we had two carbons, the carbons make four bonds, all single bonds. And so we'd have two carbons and six hydrogens. And that would just be called ethane. All right, when we go to three carbons, and again, I'll show you an easier way in a moment. Well, we can add in all of our hydrogens, and you can count them. If you don't believe me, there are eight hydrogens. And what do you think it's called? Oh, we can call on random people, propane. There you go. It's really simple. Uh, organic chemistry is actually really simple and, met and methodical. Um, so there is a shortcut. And so the zigzag way that I was mentioning, it's, it's hard to do it the first two, but with three is where you just show it like that. And that is three carbons. You never show anything for the hydrogens. So every corner is a carbon. So this would be a carbon, carbon, carbon. And then anyone with this basic training in organic chemistry uh, can say, well, then there must be eight hydrogens because the carbon, we don't show the hydrogens. All right, so for butane, but means four carbons. And our zigzag way would be one, two, three, four. So again, one, two, three, four. I'll number this one, one, two, three, four. Uh, and you'll see me using this, but more importantly, as you research your topic, if you pick an organic molecule, they always draw them usually as zigzags. And how many hydrogens? Well, every carbon has to have four bonds. So the ends would each have three hydrogens, and the middle ones would each have two, um, which would give us 10 hydrogens. When we get to five carbons, there is a trick that every carbon has two hydrogens and then the ends each have an extra two. And so that is my answer to B here, that the pattern that we're gonna see or we are seeing is that if you have an N number of carbons, the number of hydrogens is always double. There's always two hydrogens and then the N carbons always have an extra, so plus two. So we double and add two. So here we would double and add two more and the zigzag you can make it mountains or you can make it a W. It doesn't matter if you go up or down. All right, so if we get to six carbons, how many hydrogens? Double and add two, and we get 14. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can also, if you prefer, draw it out like this. Uh, this is considered the molecular. This is the structural formula. All right, big question here which you should be able to do, and this is one of the big purposes of this lab, is to help you to fully be able to embrace geometry, bond angle, and hybridization. So the geometry is tetrahedral, and I would learn these because you want it to be kind of second nature. Tetrahedrals do show up a lot. Those of you who, um, if you're going to engineering, you know, carbon-based compounds could be the way of the future in our engineering. Think about it. All right, bond angle are 109. And the hybridization, because there are four things around our carbon, right? Four things. So you always hybridize an S. And then to get, so an S is the first one, and then three Ps would make it SP3. All right, that's the idea of alkanes, all single bonds. And so that is why it's called saturated. So we're going to do cycloalkanes. And what happens with the cyclo, oh, one other thing I wanted to show you. So I made some little models here. So these are all single bonds. Is This is trying to show you the zigzag of our hexane. Uh, these would all be hydrogens filled in here in all these holes. I just didn't feel like doing it. I apologize. Uh, and so this actually doesn't stay in one place. It, it rotates around and it is always rotating freely. Single bonds are sigma bonds. The overlap of the electrons is between the nuclei and it allows free rotation, All right? So what we can do is we could actually make it into a circle. But to do that, let's go ahead and draw it. 
uh, we can draw a hexagon. And you can make it like a spaceship like I did, or you can turn it on its side to move that up. So there is a carbon at every corner. And again, you can draw them in. Draw them small, because you eventually want to be where you don't want that to overwhelm you, that you can see the shape. Uh, and then every carbon makes four bonds, but every carbon right now has two within it. So there's only two hydrogens at every corner. So the formula for this is C6H12. And so this is what I meant by creating. Now, when I closed it off, to be able to close it, I would have had to take two hydrogens off. So CH, I'm sorry, hexane, which was up here, which I never finished. I should all finish. This was pentane and hexane. Whereas this one down at the bottom of the page is cyclohexane. They are not the same. They differ by two hydrogens because to close it, I had to take off two of the hydrogens uh, to make that bond. So this C6H12 is the molecular formula and the relationship is just however many carbons you have, you have double that many hydrogens. So what we're going to on the next page is isomers and this is not an isomer of hexane. And that is because they have a different number of hydrogens. All right. So, any questions? This is where a live stream would be fun. And I'm going to move on to the next page. You can stop me. You can write down questions and ask me during office hours. So we're on page, looks like page 16. I have no idea what my page numbers mean, but we're going with what page I'm on. Uh, and we're going to talk about alkenes. And alkenes, alkenes are when we have a double bond. I was saying I had a highlighter. Uh, and that means they're unsaturated. So you've heard the term saturated and unsaturated when they talk about fats. So saturated fats, I did a little quick thing the other day that saturated fats are going to do this thing where they zigzag. And because of that, the zigzag, saturated is a zigzag. And that allows them to stack and to clot. And so whenever they've seen people have a heart attack and they go in and they go in and pull the clot out of their artery and they analyze it, it's saturated fats. It's not broccoli, it's not tofu, it's saturated fats, which comes from, oh, eating cheese or eating the cow. We don't want to eat cows, oh, they're our friends. He's telling me thank you. When I bike past the cows, they always salute me. He does stop. All right, so double bonds, the thing that's really cool that happens with the double bond is they get these kinks. So see how this guy kinked? And so what happens when you draw these chains, you don't have to draw this on your paper, this is just my passion is talking about biochemistry, is it kinks? And so the kinkiness of the double bond when they're unsaturated means they don't stack. So no stacking. So they're not gonna be part of the clot, which is a good thing. And they actually will usually kink more and more. And so these guys are fluid. However, they have a problem. And that is that double bonds have a pi bond. So they are sigma and pi. And a pi bond is where that electrons, remember, are above and below. So we have our two nuclei. And so a sigma bond, the electrons are in between. But in a pi bond, those electrons are circling around. They're up above and below. And so um, a pi bond can become, is susceptible to free radical damage. And that's why you want to stop eating processed, man-made food. Not only does it vibrationally not the same as what Mother Nature provides for you in an apple, uh, apple day keeps the doctor away. I've already had my, I had three apples today, they were smaller apples. But um, free radicals means you have an unpaired electron. And I talked about those already a little bit. Uh, unpaired electron um, is going to cause havoc. And so it turns out the zigzags clotting is not a good thing, but they need to get stuck somewhere. And so these guys 
damaged arteries and then those guys get stuck. And yeah, so how are you gonna make a free radical with this? It is uh, frying. When you fry with oils, you have high heat. Uh, so French fries, oh, not a good thing. So frying, high temperature, uh, oven temperature above 375, um, broiling, barbecuing. Um, but the biggest cause is being somebody who's stressed. Uh, when we look at the blue zones, there's a, um, the blue zones are where people live uh, vibrantly past 100. Uh, lots of people in the societies. And what they found they have in common is they don't stress. They take life in stride and they do eat pretty close to mother nature. Most of them are farmers, agriculture and stuff. All right, back to the lab. But that was really life and the important stuff. So these are sp2 hybrids. Um, let's actually draw the first one and I need those erasable pens because then I could do color. All right, so let's draw ethene. So ethene would be a double bond. So eth means two carbons and e means a double bond. So that's why they're called alkenes. Uh, and then they each need two more and those would be the hydrogens. So C2H4 would be our molecular formula. So why is there no rotation? Because of the pi bond. So that pi bond, the overlap is above and below and it doesn't allow it to bend. So you can draw your pi bond if you want, your carbon and carbon, and this is your sigma bond. And then the pi bond is that overlap, doesn't allow rotation, so they're stiff. And that's gonna give us some of these answers as we go down. So, but let's review geometry. So each carbon, you can cover up, and one, two, three things around the carbon. So three is planar triangle or trigonal planar. Uh, you do need the word planar. It is spelled with two A's, by the way. I'm not gonna mark you on spelling, thankfully. Uh, and that would be 120 degrees. All right, the hybridization, there's three things. I already gave you the answer up there, but S is the first thing that always hybridizes and then two of the P's, and that gets us to three things around there, so SP2. All right, so we're gonna do isomers. And you know what? I just realized I went from page 14 to 16. So we're gonna go back to double bonds and because I'm not gonna start all over and erase everything and reprint. We're gonna go back to page 15. Okay, the rest of them are in order. So isomers, and then we'll do double bonded isomers. So this is butane, again, one, two, three, four. And this also has four carbons, but there's only three in a row and then there's an extra piece sticking off. And this extra piece we call a methyl, or meth. Um, so methamphetamine is an amphetamine with an extra methyl group, uh, and everybody just calls it meth. So that's a depressing topic if you want to do a topic on meth. All right, but you can do it if you need to be inspired. Um, these guys are isomers. They both have four carbons. They're all single bonds. They're only carbons and hydrogens. They both have four carbons and 12 hydrogens. Isomer means same molecular formula, but somehow we've pulled sticks out and put them in in a different place. So we're going to now take five carbons and see how many different ways we can draw it. And I'm telling you the answer is gonna be three. So if you want, you can stop me, try and do your three. You can stop me. Go get a drink of water. All right, let's do five. And again, you can always draw it with the carbons in there. The zigzag is showing what it really looks like, but this is pentane. Because I'm gonna follow my instructions, which says to name it. All right, now what we can do is take that last carbon off and just put four in a row, and now I'm gonna move it over one. Now, my question would be, is that any different from putting it there? So this is the extra carbon. And turns out these are the same thing. Uh, this pentane is an isomer of this, but these two are the same thing. All we did is rotated our paper. Oh, and look, we have the same thing again. All right, so one more possible way is we could do three carbons. And now I have two more. I can stick it on the middle. Now, what if I stuck it on the end? Oh, I'd be back here. 
So I'll stick the other one on the middle. So this is a carbon in the middle, has no hydrogens, has four carbons around it, and then each of the carbons on the outside would have hydrogens, three hydrogens. So if you want, you can always write it in, CH3. There are some students that really helps them, CH3, or you can leave it as a stick. This is for you. Um, I want to show you something, and you don't have to do this, but this is because when a lot of you Google your molecules, they will do this. Sometimes when you're on the left side, they will write the H's on the other side of the C. That's still a CH3. So this is our carbon in the middle. So we do still have five carbons and 12 hydrogens. So these are all isomers. And again, let's see if my eraser works. These two in the middle were the same thing. Now, we're going to name them. First one is pentane, because there's five in a row. The second one, there are only four in a row. So this is butane. But it's not a regular butane because regular butane was up here. We have this extra piece here. We have this as a CH3. I'm just going to write it in. And when you have that extra piece, that is called a methyl because it's a one carbon that's not part of our longest zigzag. It's sticking off somewhere. And I just realized I did it wrong. Maybe somebody at home, if you're still watching, you would have been, yeah, you would have skipped through. I numbered backwards, so maybe I did that on purpose. And you always number so that the methyl has the lowest number possible. So this gets to be my number one. So realize this is, we're just drawing for a moment in space. It doesn't matter if you looked at it from the other side or from upside down. You don't need me to spin it again. You can spin, you can stand on your head for a moment. It's really good, it gets circulation to your brain. Um, that this would be the methyl is there at number two. All right, so this one, one, two, three, propane. Oh, are you gonna be tested on this? Uh, you know what, it's take home. So you could try stuff. And then in the middle, we have a methyl and a methyl. So we don't wanna say methyl, methyl, propane. So how can we say methyl, methyl? Oh, maybe the prefix dye. DI, dimethylpropane. So back to the whiteboard for a second. Again, you have propane, so three carbons. Oh, I'm not on my whiteboard. Uh, I have to be down here. Let's do this. Three carbons, propane, one, two, three. Now I'm going to put methyls on it. So I can put a methyl there. What would happen if I put a methyl there? That's actually now my longest chain is four. So that is no longer propane. We're back to our middle choice of a methyl on a butane. All right, let's try the next one. Or better yet, if you want to see if you can really get a hang of this, and I know Jim won't stop because he enjoys this, but he's probably already done the whole lab on his own, is let's take six carbons and 14 hydrogens. So we know it's an alkane because we've doubled the hydrogens and added two, so no double bonds, and it's not a cyclo, because then you also lose hydrogens. So our first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, hexane. Next one, let's take one off and just go to five, so it's gonna be a pentane, and now we have to put that extra piece somewhere. So we can put it here, and that would be at number two, one, two, three, four, five. So we do say it's a two methyl pentane. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, what if I put a methyl there? So notice if it's at a peak, we show the side group pointing up. If it's at a valley, we show the side group pointing down. So that is a three methyl pentane. Again, I don't expect that you get this 100% that I can take a whole year of organic chemistry and teach it in a one hour video. Let's expect you get the idea. It'll probably be an hour and a half, so I probably will do the ending for you too to see if you can do it. Uh, methyl. What if I put it here at the next one? We're back to this. If you don't believe me, go ahead and draw it and then flip it around. All right, so that's all we can do with pentane with six carbons. So let's go with now four carbons. So four carbons is butane. Now I have two carbons left. I can put them next door to each other. 
and I would call it two and three. So one, two, three, four. So two, three, and this is the dimethyl. Or I can do one, two, three. I can put them both on the same place. So since they're both on number two, I say two, two dimethyl. Butane. And again, all I want is that you get an appreciation of this. That you can go, oh, okay, and I need to ask her that. Um, and for those you who do go on to organic chemistry, at least you'll have an appreciation. All right, the questions. So I'm going to do ones that are not right. What if we did, you know, let's do a two carbons coming off. Well, this would actually be one, two, three, four, five. We'd be back to three methyl pentane. So that doesn't work. And you say, well, what about if I put one at number two and then one at number one? Oh, well, now that's not number one. That's one, two, three, four, five. So you can come up with different ways. You can even make a note to yourself now and say, I'm going to ask her this in the office hours. And really, all you have to do is draw it on a piece of paper or put it down, make a little notepad for questions for Sherpa for office hours. And then if you hold it up to your screen, I will be able to see it on my screen. I can make you the big one for the moment on my screen. All right, let's try the ones at the bottom of the page. Some of you are going to be really good at these. You can just look at them right off and know which pair are exactly the same and which ones are not. Um, I always had that gift too. I can look at it and I see. Uh, and some of you are going to have to count. Uh, these two are the same molecule. And so counting, this one actually, our longest chain starts, starts down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have this piece coming off here at number three and this piece coming off here at number four. So six carbons, just to show you how you would name this, is a hexane, because some of you are going to pick this up really fast. At number four, that is a methyl. So I'll say I have a four methyl. And then at number two, this is not a methyl. This is two carbons coming off. And a two carbon group is called F. So we say three ethyl. So that would actually be the name of this one. And some of you are like, oh, I don't like this. I already know I don't like it. All right, on this one, I'm going to start numbering over here. And the direction you know to number is when you run into a side group first. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the rule is you find the longest chain you can. And so here I have the methyl is at number two. And this is the ethyl group is at number four. So it's going to be a different name. It's going to be a 4-ethyl and a 2-methyl, which is different from this one. So these are isomers. Right, on this one, they are the same thing. So some of you can see you would just flip it. They're just like little yoga guys doing different position. This guy wasn't the same because they had like a long waist. This guy had a shorter waist and a longer arm. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I amused myself. Here, one, two, three, four, five. That's my doggy, Shanti, is gonna see a squirrel. She sees a squirrel. She protects us from the squirrels. It's really awesome. All right, the squirrels tease her. She is about the size of a squirrel. Those of you who have seen her, she's 9.8 pounds. Um, either that or the neighbor's dog's out and you're gonna hear the two of them barking at each other because they have these long conversations. So at two and three, we have a methyl. So we'd call it two, three, let's go ahead and name it, two comma three. We say what numbers the methyls are at, dimethyl pentane. Sometimes I throw these in as like a bonus question. Hey, let's see if you can do it. And some of you are like, I don't really care about that bonus. And some of you are like, oh, I, like, I wanna be up for the challenge, I'm gonna try it. And let's try this one. So one, two, three, four, five. So I don't go up to that because that would be only four carbons. We always want to try and find the longest chain. So this is five carbons across, and at two and three again, I have a methyl. These are the same thing. So these over here are not 
isomers. Oh, I'm sorry, these are isomers. Sorry, 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 I was right. These two over here are isomers. These are the same. So they are not isomers. If you're the same thing. Um, so again, it's back to that when we have the single bonds, we can rotate these things and we can make it look different, but really it's the same thing. All right. So I'm going to flip back over and ready or not, we're going to do more isomers and this time with double bonds. And the question is C4H8. So C4H8 is unsaturated because of the number of hydrogens. When we make this double bond, we lose two hydrogens. I'm trying to find my molecule um, to make that bond. And so our formula up here would be for every carbon, you just have the double number of hydrogens, which is pretty cool. Again, you don't need to memorize any of this stuff. It's an appreciation. You're always, oh, just take really good notes. All right. Um, and again, those who don't have printers, just take really nice notes. And then you can go back and fill things in again and listen again if you need to. So it's nice to start with the double bond. You can show it um, with the carbons or not. Um, and I'm going to show you this two ways. I'm going to put the double bond from one to two, and then I show my zigzags three and four. So that would be one, two, three, four. You could also write the carbon in, carbon, carbon, carbon. If you write the carbon in, then you have to show the hydrogens. So if you actually write C, you got to show either lines for the hydrogens. If you don't show the C, then every corner is a carbon. So this is butene, E-N-E. -E. Butene means we have a double bond. Now, something we have to do is that double bond is special. Double bonds are really reactive. They're uh, stronger than a single bond, but they're extremely reactive because of what that pi bond is. That because those electrons are in that precarious position above and below, it makes them extra reactive. Um, and so we do number where it's at. And we only give it one number, and it's always the lower of the two numbers. So we say one, two, uh, butene. All right, so what if we put the butene in the middle? So this would be one, two, three, Four. And again, if you want to write in your carbons, you could. You would have to show it like this. And if you wrote it like that on a question, you would lose points because if you show your carbons, you have to show your hydrogens. So you can show them like that, or you can, um, yeah, you can write it as a CH3. All right. So this is 2-butene. And this is a cool one because there's two ways we could show it. And this is why I love the zigzags. We could show it this way, or we could show it this way. They are both two butene, but they get a special extra piece to them. And it has to do with the double bond does not rotate, it's stiff. And so this is my first one where we have the kink. This is how things exist in nature. I mentioned it in the lecture the other day that you should have watched, or today. I don't know, maybe you're cramming all your chemistry in one day. God bless you if you're doing that. You and me are together all day. Isn't that awesome? And this is the other choice, which is trans. And here, I wasn't as lazy. I did fill in all my hydrogens. Yeah, I could tell you on the other one, I just ran out of a little white balls, but I can see next to me, I have a whole kit of them. Uh, these little pieces are really hard for me to get out. I have a special shoehorn, and I'm still not good. So this one is called trans. And it's called trans because these pieces sticking off go across. So like the transcontinental railroad and cis, they're going in the same direction. Um, so some people think of them like sisters. It means, I can't remember in Latin. You guys can pause me and Google it. And somebody give me a shout out. This where that live stream on the side would be awesome. Uh, and so somebody would say, oh, look, Davis. Davis said, oh, this is what it means, Dr. Sherpa. And I am so grateful that you gave me that piece of information. So I'm gonna deviate for a second. So we're gonna go back to the whiteboard. Um, this one, again, my passion is about nutrition and stuff. And so if you remember, I talked about earlier that the zigzags stack and they make the clot, but it was the double bonds that caused the free radical damage. Well, trans is awesome because trans, if you kept going, 
Oh, look at that. They lose the kink. So they stack. And they have a double bond. So they oxidize. That's what a free radical is. Do you guys remember that word oxidize? I don't have Leo here. All I have is the cow. The cow says, I remember what it means. It's also trying to tell you trans doesn't exist out there in nature. Eat real. Not him, though. He's very grateful if you don't eat him. He's also grateful when Shanti doesn't eat him. Shanti is a little terror. So oxidized means you lose an electron. And that's not good. Oxidative damage, you've all heard of oxidative stress. So trans is a double whammy. It causes the stress, it destroys your artery electrons, and then it stacks up and makes the clot. And so we've banned them, but we haven't banned sugar. And sugar is one of the best oxidizing agents that your body can get. And high fructose corn syrup is seven times better at doing it than anything else. And then your body stores it as fat and stores it as um, fat in your belly. And it overwhelms your liver because it's your liver that has to do it. And so you get non-alcoholic fatty liver. Um, and yeah, it's not pretty. Children are having alcoholic livers. They're getting the same problems as alcoholics as children because of all the high fructose corn syrup in everything. So make that a healthy change for a month. Like all of you are gonna do a healthy change. I'm determined that I can get my 222 class to actually try to be healthy. Um, Cause what else do you have to do? Cause you're all home. You got this beautiful chance to go inside yourself and say, I'm gonna do some healthy changes. I'm gonna start cooking from scratch. All right, there are four. So we have to do one more. Uh, and the only other choice would be if we do three carbons and one coming off. So this is one, two, three. This little extra piece here is the methyl. If you want, you can write it in as a CH3. Hello. Uh, so this is a methyl and three carbons is prop. So we say methyl, prop, and then ene. Sometimes they call it propylene, was an old way like polypropylene, plastics. We're going to do a lab with plastics. You're going to have a choice. It's going to be a home lab. It's going to be a choice. Um, but it is that they had these and they made a polymer. All right. Um, so it's four carbons, one double bond. So it tells you the number of double bonds tells you the hydrogens are the same. Uh, and you can put the two methyl here, but Actually, they don't put the two methyl there because the methyl can't be anywhere else. Because we put it at one or three, then we're back to the butenes. All right. So those are four. And then it just talks to you about cis and trans there. Oh, well, let's go back. And it doesn't matter which one of the isomers you look at. How many sigma? How many pi bonds? Well, in every case, there's one pi bond because of the double bond. Now, the thing that's tricky on these... If you ever see one, which you could, you have to have an appreciation, and this you would be tested on. That if I drew a picture, you should be able to tell me how many carbons, how many hydrogens. And so I made it here. And so what we're showing the picture is three sigma bonds, but then we have to add all the hydrogens. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. So three plus eight is 11. That one we can do. And I know I got it right. All right. So then I ask you, can you find two other isomers of four carbons and eight hydrogens that are not alkenes? And I know Jim is watching this and he's like, yes, yes, I know, I know. Maybe Edward, anybody else figure it out? Because we talked about them. Oh, it's when you do that cyclo thing. Remember that? So, all right. There are a lot of harder to pull apart. Yeah, you can see these are not going to be stable. Look at that bond angle. That is a 90 degree bond angle and it's stressing it. But that is possible. You can make it a diamond or a square. Every corner is a carbon, then every carbon would have two more bonds. This is called cyclobutane. I said there's two. So the other possibility is we can do that. Oh my gosh. I don't think. My kit will allow me to do this. No. Um, I would break it. I've, I've done that before, and I don't want to break this beautiful kit that somebody got for me. Actually, I have a couple of them. Um, because none of you have them this year, so I can't give them out. All right. So, methyl 
that's what this extra piece is. So I had to pull the one off. I could find a double bond. I'd have to find a little flexy thing. This guy's gonna like explode on itself because like this angle is 60 degrees now, right? And like, I can't even make it. There we go. And then we have to add this guy. And then we fill in all the little holes with all the little hydrogens. And this guy's gonna explode. Yeah, that would not be a good thing because the bond angle is too small. These are not very stable. Uh, in nature, we're going to find pentagons and hexagons with carbons. Um, so sugar molecules, so fructose is a pentagon. Uh, ribose in DNA and RNA is a pentagon. And then glucose is a hexagon. So I've been teaching my other class. If you want, you can watch those videos. Same channel. Um, so here we go. Um, all right, questions? Let's see. We finished. Four pages down and a couple pages to go. So I'm on alkynes, and this is probably my favorite joke of all time. So porcupine, porcupine has, right? He's got double bonds and then porcupine, he's got the triple bond. Look at his triple little things. All right, oh, you know what? For those who watch this, you know what? I can put my bonus emails in my videos and then I'll know if anybody actually watches me. By the way, thank you whoever liked me. That was like really affected my ego and so now my ego is like huge because somebody actually gave me a like um, and yeah. Anyway, so find your favorite organic chemistry cartoon. You should probably understand it. Um, that's why it would be your favorite. You're like, oh, now I understand it and send it as an email or you can make one up. Some of you are really good at making them up. But with Ein, like there's all kinds of people out there, are all kinds of chemicals. Um, so with Y-N-E or the E-N-E, and then we'll see other ones on the next page. So triple bond. Alkynes are a triple bond. So let's draw it. Oh, here we go. I made it. I made one. So there's our triple bond. We got a lot of pi bonds going on here. So F fine, F is two carbons. You're always gonna have your notes here, so don't panic. Get an appreciation. So my question is, how many hydrogens are we gonna fit in here? Carbon makes how many bonds? Let's hear it. You hear Megan from way down the gorge? She's going four, four sure, but four bonds. Woohoo, high five to Megan. All right. And all of you, you all got that it was four. So there can only be one more and that's how we can show the hydrogen or you can also write it in. So you can show those little sticks or you can actually write it in one on each side. Uh, so the formula is just two carbons and two hydrogens. It's an interesting generic formula for those of you who like these. For every number of carbons you have, you'll always double the hydrogens, but now we lost two more. We lost the two to begin with, the plus two, and now we lost two more. So that's the generic. You don't need to know that. How many sigma bonds? Well, hydrogens are a sigma bond. And this one in the middle, the monkey bond in the middle. Whoops, I was going to write three sigma. That's our symbol for sigma. And there are two pi. So a triple bond is one sigma, one pi. I'm sorry, a triple bond is one sigma, two pi's. Um, and so you get this overlap. In between is the sigma. Above and below is one, is the double bond. And then in front and behind. So you'd have a double donut above and below, and I cannot make the balloon animals. Somebody could make the balloon bonds and send me a picture. The other class sending me pictures of what their lab is. You guys wait for that. Got to wait like two more weeks. All right. So we're going to draw and name three alkynes. I have to print the class list so I can call on different people instead of whose ever name is on top of my mind. Um, so let's draw a name. We're going to do three ways and we have five carbons. Oh, by the way, I wanted to show you, well, let's go ahead and do the first one. Um, you can draw the carbons in. I'm going to draw it in for this first one. And then we can put another carbon, another carbon, another carbon. If you want to try and draw it without drawing any carbons in, because you have to show that hydrogen. These you don't have to because you didn't show the carbons. But if you did show the carbons, you got to show the hydrogens. You can't mix and match. It's one way or the other. Let's say you didn't show any carbons. What this would look like, and this is weird. One, two, 
three. It's straight out. So there's a triple and it keeps going straight and then you zigzag. So four, five. So these two are the same thing. I'm just trying to show you. These are both the same thing. So one, two, three, four, five is pent. And then the YNE ending for triple bond. The triple bond's at number one, so we call it a one pentine. So we can make a two pentine and you can always show your carbons. You know, since this is take home for your midterm, you are gonna have some organic chemistry on there, but you're gonna have your notes. So there's this whole email thing going around and everybody's wanting to Zoom their exam. So I'm sitting there going, I'm gonna sit there for like two hours and watch you guys take an exam. Do you know how painful that would be for me? Did I ever tell you a story about my advisor when I was in graduate school and had uh, my, not my dissertation, that I nailed even though I didn't think I did. It was my prelims. So like after a year and a half, and so I picked my lab and I'm working with uh, Dr. Perry Blackshear, who was awesome. I uh, had the most amazing blue eyes. That's actually why I worked with him. Because the first day I went to meet him, somebody suggested I go work with him. I like couldn't talk because he just said, hello, darling. And he looked at me with these blue eyes and I was like, holy moly, this guy's got amazing blue eyes. All right. Um, but amazing advisor. And he, uh, in my prelim, so I'm sitting there, 22 years old, and it's these five men, because it was all men. I think there was one woman in the whole building, like this four or five story building, uh, who was a doctorate in biochemistry. But I had all men on my committee, and they're all like sitting there, and I'm like 22, and they're all in their 50s. So they're like old people like me, right? And they're asking me questions, and I'm like bombing it like doing terrible, answering the questions verbally. It's a verbal exam and I'm just like, but, but obviously I have my doctorate, so I finally nailed it because the one thing I did know was before I went in, I didn't really study because how can you study for like all the knowledge that there is? And, um, you know, Werner Heisenberg, who's the Heisenberg theory, he uh, did not, or almost did not pass his prelims. I mean, he obviously did because he went on, um, but he couldn't draw a battery. And so, and those of you take 223 with me, we're gonna draw batteries. So you won't have that problem. Anyway, I had looked up what each of them did as their research. And so I knew a little bit about each one of them. And so what saved me was after like two hours of flubbing all the answers they were asking me is I referred to somebody's research and the guy just lit up and he just thought I was the most brilliant person. Cause I said, well, an example of that, sir, would be this research that you just published. And then I re referred to somebody else randomly and they just decided I was the smartest person ever. Cause you know, it's like when somebody gave me a like and I can't tell who liked me, but it like makes your ego go. So now you're all gonna like me on this video and get like a hundred likes. Dr. Russell even subscribed to my channel. All right, probably I'll get one like because nobody's watching this. I know Jim and Edward are gonna watch this. So I have total faith in Aaron. There's a couple of you watching it. All right. So anyway, back to what Dr. Blackshear did to me is he, well, I'm flubbing it. He this like an hour and a half into it. He's just drinking coffee. We're in this closed room and he's drinking coffee like you would not believe. I don't know how, because he couldn't leave the room. So he has this huge cup of coffee. And this is back when you just made your own coffee. coffee, And, and he's drinking it before he get. I don't know where he got all this coffee from. It was like the miracle of the coffees. I guess Jesus kept filling up my coffee cup. I don't know. But he just leans over and says to me, because he had to go pee, basically. He had to leave to go to the bathroom. And he leans over to tell me something. And all the men get really upset because they thought he was telling me an answer. But you want to know what he leaned over and said to me? This is me, 22 years old, totally out of my like comfort zone like I am right now, doing this virtually, like can't see any of you, but I do, I see all of you in my heart, um, is he said, if you hear a shotgun, don't come looking for me. And, and he walked out, went to the bathroom, and I'm just sitting there. And then while he was gone was when I had the brilliant insight to uh, start referring to people's research. But... Um, Dr. Blackshear did that to me another time when I had to give a presentation like four years later and we were, uh, there were only men presenting and so somebody said, hey, we need a female presenter. Can your graduate student talk? And he's like, sure. And so 
he had me do a practice of it like the day before or two days before and he just gave me this look and just kept nodding like shaking his head like that was terrible and i said you're gonna go jump off the cliff aren't you and he's like no i'm gonna go and take you and throw you off the cliff but anyway he like made me keep practicing and practicing and practicing and this, this like half of the seminars uh and then i nailed it um so sometimes things like that are good all right let's go back to this you could have fast forward through there but it would be straight across so you actually would be like that that would be one two three four and then five is sticking up and this is two pentine there would not be a three pentine we can go back and draw it on our little white erase board we'll get rid of the trans get rid of the trans fats are gone and sorry if we tried to put it at one two three to four and we'd be straight to there and then five. Oh, we just numbered backwards this would be one two three four five something i didn't really emphasize and not a huge point although it's important for organic chemists the triple bond and double bond always have to have the lowest number possible so there is no three pentine uh, but i said there is one other way and that would be we'd have to go to just four carbons so one two three four so one two three four and then coming off of number three would be a methyl so this is what it would look like and i did not draw that very well i apologize all right so methyl butyne so the triple bonds at number one the methyls at number three so we say the methyls at number three and this one is referring to the y-n-e we put it in front of the butte all right uh can cis-trans exist no no never ever cis-trans exists when you have a double bond and this is a triple bond there is like nothing it's straight across it's linear so the answer is no because it's linear oh my goodness there are like at least a dozen different ways you can draw c5h8 so you can do two double bonds and another carbon and you fill in your hydrogens you can do a cyclo with the double bond so this would be cyclopentene and like this guy would be one sorry this is number one two three four five so this would be pentadiene so the dye goes in front of the ene because it's saying there's two enes and we would say double bonds are at one and three so we say one three pentadiene uh, you can make a cyclobutene which again would be explosive extremely reactive these guys are crazy if we showed this correctly we would show boop and right where you can do assist with it all right you can play with that and find five beautiful i'm moving on aromatics This is my story. It's about the delocalized. And we get a resonance. So the story is they knew that they had a compound that was C6H6. So anyway, you could lose that many hydrogens because normally six carbons wants 14 hydrogens, going way back to the first page on alkanes. So to lose that many, you have to have double bonds. And then even a cyclo. So they came up with this idea. But double bonds are extremely reactive, extremely reactive. And this turns out to be extremely stable. And Kukuli had a dream and he saw a snake eating its own tail. That's the story. It's a wonderful myth and I like to believe it's true. And I do not want to have a dream about a snake mm -hmm. eating its tail. But it comes out, we draw it as if there's every other bond as a double single. But the little gnomes actually talked to Kukuli in his dream and they said, all of those bonds are the same. So I like to draw it this way. This ring is six delocalized electrons in a pi bond. That is a pi bond that is over the whole thing. So all of your bonds 
are 1.5 bonds. They are all equal. They are not double. I, we don't call it saturated or unsaturated, really. I'm sure somebody does call it one and somebody else calls it the other. We call them aromatic. Aromatic aroma usually means smells really wonderful. Like when you make bread, these guys stink. Like all organic chemical stuff smells terrible. And that's your nose saying, this is danger. This guy is flat. So our description is benzene is a flat hexagon. Is it flat? Yep. And it's toxic. It's a carcinogen. It was the classic carcinogen. Because it's flat, it fits into the DNA nook and cranny and uh, causes free radical damage, which destroys it. All the bonds, I already talked about that, are 1.397 angstroms. The gnomes are more precise than that. They go out like 10 or 12 sig figs. Uh, does benzene have um, the answer is no, they're all 1.5 bonds. I already answered that. All right. I'm thinking like one of our gnomes should be here. My gnome. Hold on. I'll be back. Don't make me too much work. This is my Christmas gnome. Oh. You know, this is fun. Maybe I'll do this lecture style. All right. The gnome. This is a gnome. For those of you who don't know who the gnome is, there's his noth. We're going to talk about the noths next week. And I don't know why he's, he shouldn't be holding his mouth because, well, they don't get the coronavirus. They're immune to it. They keep trying to tell us what to do, but we don't want to listen. I think he's telling us, listen to your heart. All right. It was at one time used as a solvent. That's because it's nonpolar. It's only carbon and hydrogen. Uh, but it's carcinogenic, extremely. So toluene is our ring. So you draw your hexagon with a ring. It tells us it's six carbons, and there's only one thing at every corner. And what we do is, Noam tells us, pull that off, and we put this on. And then we need to find hydrogens. You would have hydrogens here. And I can't find another one here. And this little piece is a hydrogen. And that's toluene. I've had people do that. They will look like that, so you can't tell. This is a CH3 group. Um, and so it doesn't fit as well. It causes headaches and stuff, but it's used for car racing. So I've had people who've been into cars to do their topic on that. Um, and it's used as a solvent. It stinks also. And so it does cause liver issues, just not carcinogenic. Um, it just causes you to slowly have issues. All right, what we're going to do is put two chlorines on benzene. Now, every corner of benzene can only put one thing. So you cannot put the chlorines at the same place. You can put them next door to each other. You can put them one carbon apart. So here they're at one and two. Any position can be one. It just has to be, this is at one and three. Remember to put your ring. If you don't put that ring in the center, you can get it wrong. You can put it at one and four. This is called ortho or O meta. Ortho is the name of that one chemical company. Um, so they did something like this to make an insecticide. You can go after, you can do like your topic on something like that if you want to be kind of depressed, or you can do it on something really exciting like vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. I can see the sunshine's coming out. So I got three pages to go. Oh, you want to bike ride? Orthometapara. And my question is dipole. Dipole means polar. So yeah, here the chlorines are pulling. Here the chlorines are still pulling. And here the chlorines, because this is flat, it is nonpolar, so there's no pool. Uh, that only happens with benzene. The cyclo one, which I took apart, is not flat. It makes a boat, and so that doesn't happen. All right, our gnome's moved over. Oh, we finished another page. We just have two pages to go. Did you guys all get that? Oh, you can rewind. Right. I can keep going. 
I'm gonna have to slow down. All right, you can take a break, go enjoy the sunshine. I don't know.